Welcome. Let's take a look at maximizing the area of an inscribed rectangle. What we want to do is find the area of the largest rectangle that fits inside a semicircle of radius 10. In this case, one side of the rectangle is along the diameter of the semicircle. So let's start with a diagram. So we have a semicircle. So that looks something like this. And we know that the radius of this semicircle is equal to 10. Now we know we want the largest rectangle that fits inside the semicircle. Um, and one side of the di uh, rectangle needs to be along the diameter. So our rectangle would look something like this where one side of the rectangle lies along the diameter. Now, because the radius is 10, we know that the distance from the center of the circle to this corner of the rectangle is 10, and likewise the distance from this corner back to the center of the semicircle is 10. So this rectangle has a side along the diameter um, and these, the left half of the rectangle side and the right half would be congruent. So let's call this B and this B. So the total length of this side of our rectangle would be 2B. Let's go ahead and label the height of the rectangle. Let's call that H. And so at this point, we could say that the area of our rectangle is the base of the rectangle, which is 2B, times the height, or simply 2BH. Now at this point, we have two variables in our area function. So let's see what we can do to rewrite this on a, as a single variable. Notice that we have an angle theta that is formed by the radius from the center of the circle to this corner of the rectangle that lies on the circle. And this creates a nice triangle for us keeping in mind that this radius is length 10. So let's go ahead and focus on that triangle. So our triangle looks something like this, where we have the height and we have B. This is the center of the semicircle. This is the vertex or the corner of the rectangle on the semicircle and connecting them is a radius, and the radius is 10. So we have this angle here, theta. And so what we could do is we could relate our two variables, h and b, to a single variable, theta, and if we did that, then our area function would be a function of theta rather than of b or of a. So how would that work? Well, we can say that sine of theta would be the side opposite over hypotenuse, so that would be h over 10. That would mean that we could replace h with 10 times sine of theta. And we could say that cosine of theta is the side adjacent to theta over hypotenuse, so that would be b over 10. So then we could say that b is equal to 10 cosine theta. So if we use that information, we can now rewrite our area as 2 times uh, base is 10 cosine theta, and height is 10 sine theta, so area would be 200 cosine theta times sine theta. 
Now let's think about the reasonable domain for this function, for theta. Um, if theta is 0, then we really don't have a rectangle. And if theta is as much as pi over 2, then we also really don't have a rectangle. So our angle theta could be uh, where this corner of the rectangles down here near the diameter, in which case theta would be 0, or theta could be as much as pi over 2, but then that would mean the corners of the rectangle are up here near the top of the semicircle. So the feasible domain for theta would be that theta is somewhere between 0 and pi over 2. So um, let's go ahead and uh, find our critical points so that we can find the largest area. Okay, we're maximizing the area. So um, A prime would be 200 times derivative of cosine is negative sine theta times sine theta plus, and then now using derivative of sine being cosine, we have cosine theta times cosine theta. Now we use the product rule to find the de uh, derivative of a. So now we have a prime is equal to 200, and I'm going to switch the order of sine and cosine here. I'm going to write this as cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Now there's a couple of different things we could do. Uh, we would want to use an identity to somehow uh, write this as a single trigonometric function. We could use one of the Pythagorean identities. What I'm going to do this time is I'm going to use the double angle formula. That is that cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta is equal to cosine of 2x, or that would be 2 theta. So a prime is equal to 200 times cosine of 2 theta. Now there are two sources for critical points. Uh, one source is where a prime equals 0. The second source is where a prime does not exist or is undefined. Uh, with this particular uh, trigonometric function, cosine, nice and uh, smooth and differentiable, uh, there are no places where that function is undefined. So we'll record that. And so now we want to consider where 200 cosine 2 theta equals 0. Well, if we divide both sides of this equation by 200, we get cosine of 2 theta equals 0. And so we want to know where cosine of 2 theta equals 0. Well, that would mean that 2 theta would have to equal either pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2 and so forth. Well, 2 theta equals pi over 2 if we divide by 2, that means theta is equal to pi over 4. If we have 2 theta equals 3 pi over 2, that means theta equals, if I divide both sides of the equation by 2, uh, 3 pi over 4. But if we look at the domain of uh, our theta here, we can disregard the theta that is 3 pi over 4, and focus on the theta that is pi over 4. So now we have a critical point that's in a closed interval. So we can compare the area at our critical point to the area at the two endpoints. So let's go ahead and do that. So we want to compare area at 0, area at pi over 4, and area at pi over 2. So area at 0 is 200 
cosine of zero, which is one, sine of zero, which is zero. So 200 times one times zero, that's zero. At pi over four, we have 200 times one over square root of two is the cosine at pi over four. Um, sine at pi over four is also one over square root of two. So we end up with uh, 200 over two or 100. And then area at pi over two, we're gonna get 200 times cosine at pi over two is zero and sine at pi over two is one. 200 times zero times one is zero. So we compare these three outputs, these three values, and our absolute maximum is here at 100. So now we just need to um, declare our findings. And so what we found is that the area of the largest rectangle that can be inscribed in a semicircle of radius 10 is 100 square units. I hope you find this helpful.